Hi, I'm Richard Howe. Welcome to today's, to today's virtual walk. It's called the Canals of Lowell. Uh, we've done several actual walks that have taken us along certain canals, but there are so many of them, they couldn't be done in one walk. And so they, it's really a perfect topic for a virtual walk where geography really doesn't make any difference. I'm going to cover the whole canal system today because I think it's useful for people to have a comprehensive view of the canal system. And we're going to cover their creation chronologically. Now, the whole reason Lowell is, uh, even exists is because of the Pawtucket Falls on the Merrimack River. Um, for as long as human beings have inhabited this area, the Merrimack River has been an important, uh, an important transportation route. When the English first came here, uh, one of their main objectives was to extract raw materials like timber and furs from the interior forests of New Hampshire. And the Merrimack was a perfect route for getting that, uh, those materials out to the seacoast at Newburyport where they could be shipped to markets overseas. But it was a flawed transportation route because in about a one mile stretch, the Merrimack dropped 32 feet at a place called Pawtucket Falls. Um, and it was the best they had. So uh, rafts carrying timber or uh, fur or other material coming down river would have to unload, they'd carry it past the falls, then they'd load it onto other rafts and continue on to Newburyport in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, that was all they had, so that's what they did. Now, after the American Revolutionary War, uh, the, some men got together and built a canal, a transportation canal to work its way around the Pawtucket Falls. And that was in 1796. It was called the Pawtucket Canal. It's shown here in this map, looping down like a, a spread out letter U uh, along the bottom of the map. It came off the Merrimack River up above the Pawtucket Falls and it rejoined or joined not the Merrimack but the Concord River as it flowed north just a shot distance from where that river flowed into the Merrimack. Now to handle the 32 foot change in elevation of the river, the builders of the Pawtucket Canal created three lock chambers to allow canal boats to, um, to change, to go through at different elevations of the water. Um, the first one was called the Guard Locks. It's where the Francis Gatehouse is. And that's off of Broadway in the Acre neighborhood. It's not far from where the river, uh, where the canal comes off the river, uh, which is sort of where what I would call Burbeck's ice cream stand um, along the Pawtucket Street. The next, uh, and then the Pawtucket Canal continues on through the Acre. Uh, this is the back of Western Avenue. It's one of the um, many places that uh, the canal passes by continues on. Um, so this is taken from uh, Thorndike, uh, from Dutton Street, looking up the Pawtucket Canal. In the distance is Western Avenue Studios on the right. And in the front right is the Dunkin' Donuts that's on D Dutton Street. This is the bridge that carries Dutton Street over the canal. And uh, this is the second lock chamber. It's called the Swamp Locks. When this was first built, the land around here was swampy, hence its name. Here's a view uh, from the other side of the Swamp Locks. You can see that there's a lock chamber in the foreground and the gatehouse, which controls the flow of the rest of the water through the canal. The red brick building in the distance is the former Textile History Museum. The Pataka Canal continues uh, eastward through a number of mill buildings. In the distance, you can see the Middlesex Community College main campus building on East Merrimack Street. The uh, Pataka Canal continues underneath Central Street, which is shown here. In the background, you can see the Market Street parking garage and you might recognize the sculpture that's on either side of Central Street sitting on these piers in the canal. 
and it then um, goes to the right of the tan colored gatehouse in this photo into the third and final lock chamber, which is called the lower locks. Now the lock chamber you can see in the left of this photograph and the gatehouse that controls the flow of the water is on the right. Now once boats eventually pass through all three of these lock chambers, they've dropped 32 feet and uh, here's the last of the locks in the lower locks and down below is the water of the Concord River. And this is looking back into the lock chamber. There's the pedestrian walkway that uh, connects the UMass Lowell Inning Conference Center on the left with Middlesex Community College on the right. And we're looking uh, from the eastern bank of the Concord River back towards the end of the Pawtucket Canal. Now this is looking from the west bank from uh, around where that lock chamber was looking out onto the Concord River. In uh, the left you can see the the Pearl Harbor Bridge over the Concord River on East Merrimack Street. And in the background, in the distance, you can see the Lowell Memorial Auditorium. Now the Pateka Canal worked very well for a couple of years, but then a competing canal called the Middlesex Canal opened up. Instead of just going around the Pawtucket Falls, the Middlesex Canal took boats off the Merrimack River on the upriver side of the Pawtucket Falls and carried them 32 miles to the Charles River in Boston. And because it, uh, merchants could get more for their goods in Boston than in Newburyport, uh, they started choosing the Middlesex Canal as the route for their, the, the goods they were shipping out to the coast. Now it took all the business away from the Pawtucket Canal and it eventually went out of business. It still sat there, but it was basically unused. And it remained that way for almost 20 years. Uh, and in the meantime, the gentleman shown in this silhouette, uh, Francis Cabot Lowell, had imported into an Amer America uh, the large scale textile, cotton textile manufacturing methods that were in use in England. He created his first factory on the banks of the Charles River in Waltham. It was a great success, and he and his associates looked for a, a place to grow, but they needed more water power because the Charles River only dropped a couple of feet in, uh, in Waltham. Well, Francis Cabot Lowell died in 1817 before the expansion could be undertaken, um, but his associates knew of the Pawtucket Falls. They knew of the unused Pawtucket uh, Canal, and so they came to this area, which was then called East Chelmsford, and they purchased the, all of the stock of the corporation that owned the Pawtucket Canal. It was called the um, proprietors of the locks and canals on Merrimack River. And they bought up most of the land along the canal bank and along the Merrimack River. Uh, and the reason they did was because in the 1820s, and it was late in 1821 that they did this, the only practical mean of, means of power generation for a large scale manufacturing of any type was hydropower. Uh, the, the energy created when water fell and it would fall into a, a pit that uh, would turn and turn a turbine like the one you see in the right <coughs> foreground. Um, because of this 32 foot drop in elevation, the uh, Pawtucket, uh, the Pawtucket Falls and the Merrimack River could create an enormous amount of, of energy that could be used to drive large and um, multiple textile mills. And they were used to drive this type of machinery, a cotton loom. So uh, the, the innovators, the um, entrepreneurs imported a group of Irish immigrants, laborers, to help dig the canals and build the mills. Now, they already had the Pawtucket Canal, but the key to using a, a canal for uh, hydropower is to um, have the water enter the mill on one side and then drop out on another, the other side at a lower level. The Pawtucket Canal had been built as a transportation canal, not as a power generation canal. Uh, and so it really uh, wasn't suitable for the purpose of driving a mill. For that reason, the, um, uh, the founders of the city of Lowell 
uh, had their laborers create a whole new canal, and it was called the Merrimack Canal. It was an offshoot of the Pataka Canal that started in the vicinity of the Swamp Locks and it ended at the Merrimack River. The Merrimack Canal was the first purposely constructed power generation canal in Lowell. Now this is looking uh, from Dutton Street towards downtown Lowell. You can see that there's this, um, this fork of the water with the Pataka Canal would be going to the right and the, the newly dug Merrimack Canal went to the left where it followed the course of Dutton Street uh, until it goes through what is now Lowell High, the Lowell High School campus and, and then went into the uh, Merrimack River. But on the way, it powered the Merrimack Manufacturing Corporation, which was the first of the big textile mills in Lowell. Um, this was located where the Songus Arena is and um, across the street from Lowell High School. This is a photo um, that was taken during urban renewal when the Merrimack Manufacturing Company was demolished. The red arrow in the lower corner of the photograph points to the Merrimack Canal, uh, which is right where Lowell High School is. In fact, the, the large roof just to the left of the red arrow would be the 1922 building of Lowell High School. Uh, and the Songus Arena also sits on land that was occupied by mill buildings of the Merrimack Canal. In fact, behind the Songus Arena, these granite curbs that are embedded in the lawn outline the foundation of the actual mills. And there are many other artifacts on display back there uh, along the river walk. They're sort of subtle, but if you look hard enough, it, there you can find them in the National Park is put labels to explain what they are. <laughs> Next um, expansion of Lowell came in 1828. Uh, and that was the creation of two canals. The first one I'll talk about is the Lowell Canal. That's probably not very well known. Uh, and it's mostly because it's invisible to the eye. Uh, the Merrimack, the Lowell Canal is actually right behind the Market Bill, Mills Building, which is where the uh, National Park Visitors Center is. This is the Merrimack Canal, which I've been talking about. This is um, from uh, Market Street, a bridge Market Street, looking back up along uh, with Dutton Street to the right. And if you see where there's a group of people in the photo to the left, that's where the uh, parking lot for the National Park Visitor Center is. Well, here's another angle of that same group of people. And you can see that there's this uh, red platform that's below the surface of the land they're standing on. And if you look hard enough, there's a couple of openings underneath the, the land that they're standing on. That's the start of the Lowell Canal. Here's a close-up that shows the opening. So the Lowell Canal powered the Lowell Manufacturing Corporation, which was constructed in the building that the National Park occupies. The Lowell Canal flowed underground parallel to Market Street, and then it took a right turn and flowed back out into the uh, Pawtucket Canal and continued on into the Concord River. The second canal built in the 1828 expansion was the Hamilton Canal. And that's shown uh, in this map. Uh, this is from the window of mill number five, looking down at Jackson Street. And that's the Hamilton Canal down, uh, down below. And that was actually named for Alexander Hamilton, who was a hero for the founders of Lowell. Uh, the mills on the other side of the canal are the Appleton Mills and the uh, Hamilton Mills are further down on the left, and also their uh, bill number five is contained in some of the buildings of the Hamilton Canal, of the Hamilton Manufacturing Corporation. So here's another shot as the Hamilton Canal travels to the east uh, along Jackson Street. Um, this is right before it squeezes through a couple of mill buildings. The parking garage on the right is the Edward Early parking garage on Middlesex Street. 
Now, disregard all the trash here, but this is the end of the Hamilton Canal. This is looking back towards the Hamilton Canal District and the Lowell Justice Center and Mill Number no. 5. So the Hamilton Canal uh, flows down here. Much of the water is siphoned off as it flows into the mills down into their wheel pits and then out into the parallel Pawtucket Canal. But the water that doesn't go that way comes into this area. It's called the waste way because the water has essentially been wasted. It's not been used to power any mills. And it takes a left turn, which is right in the foreground. Uh, and it's going to come out onto the Pawtucket Canal. And to orient you, the sculpture along Central Street on the Pawtucket Canal is in the left part of this picture. And the um, the mill building, the former mill building that's now a residence uh, on the left-hand side is where the Hamilton Canal comes out. And so you can see it in this picture, the dark area to the left of the picture with the uh, kind of the uh, moving water coming out of it. And another key uh, expansion in 1828 was the creation of the Lowell Machine Shop. The looms and other equipment used in the textile mills didn't exist and nobody was making it in the United States. So uh, in order to have it for the mills in Lowell, they had to make it in Lowell. The Lowell Machine Shop was an enormous enterprise and it really became a center of innovation in America. It was located uh, in the Swamp Locks area in uh, the land that's behind the tan colored gatehouse. Well, here's an older photograph showing the um, extent of the Lowell machine shop. Now I've labeled in blue with gold letters in the lower right hand corner, that's the swamp locks. That's what we see right here. And uh, to the left, there's Dutton Street with the train tracks running alongside of it. And in the far right, the largest building is part of the Hamilton Mills. That's what we know as mill number five today. And so this is the Lowell Machine Shop. That was torn down in the eight, uh, 1930s. Next big expansion came eight years later in 1836. Uh, and that was with the creation of the Western Canal. Uh, the the uh, Merrimack Canal uh, was feeding the Merrimack Mills and they, uh, they, there was such a great demand for cotton cloth that the owners wanted to expand, um, but they didn't have the footprint along the river that was serviced by either the Merrimack or the Pawtucket Canal or the Hamilton Canal. So uh, they dug the Western Canal, which is a very long canal, second only to Pawtucket Canal in length. Now that leaves this uh, swamp locks um, at the swamp locks. Now the bridge on the left is the entryway to the Western Canal. The red brick building is the Textile History Museum across Dutton Street. And the Western Canal um, goes behind that building and then it curves to the right. And then it flows really northward towards the river. It goes between the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church and St. Patrick's Church, crosses Market Street, it crosses Merrimack Street, and it crosses Moody Street, which uh, is where uh, that, that bridge is uh, closer to St. Patrick's. I believe that might be Broadway. Um, the bridge in this picture is um, it's, uh, Moody Street. And so now this is between Moody Street and French Street Extension or, um, uh, or the river. And this is the end of the Western Canal. It ends where the, uh, what we now know as the Juan and Lancet Mills. However, when it was constructed, that was called the, the um, Suffolk Mills. And across the street from that, where the Jean d'Arc Credit Union headquarters is now, it was called the Tremont Mills. Well, the uh, Western Canal continued on to the river after powering these two mills. Uh, but then a third mill complex called the Lawrence Mills was created. And to service that, uh, an offshoot of the Western Canal called the Lawrence Canal was dug. So uh, that's the 
the Lawrence Canal really starts where that small gatehouse is right here, goes between those buildings and then it flows down towards the, the Merrimack River. Now on the right, you can see the Songus Arena and there's the Lawrence Manufacturing Company. Um, the third big canal expansion from 1836 was the Eastern Canal. That came off the Pawtucket Canal right at the lower locks. So here's a picture from Central Street looking the, the looking to the east, the uh, Indian Conference Center on the right, Middlesex Community College on the left. The Pawtucket Canal is to the right-hand side of this picture. It goes to the right of the Tan Gatehouse and through the locks into the Concord River. The Eastern Canal curves to the left where it uh, heads out towards East Merrimack Street, which is where the bridge is. That bright red building on the left is the former Lowell Sun headquarters. Uh, the Eastern Canal continues on, and it was designed to power the Massachusetts mills. And then it turned to the left, and it also uh, it crossed underneath Bridge Street, and then it powered the boot cotton mills. There's the Massachusetts mills. And the final big expansion of the Lowell um, Canal system came in 1848. And the biggest thing was the creation of the Northern Canal, which um, may be, it's almost as long as the Western Canal. The Northern Canal was different because up until then, everything came off the Pawtucket Canal. And this created a problem because you had uh, multiple canals draining water out of the Pawtucket. You had the Hamilton, the Eastern Canal, the Merrimack, the Lowell Canal, the Western Canal, and the Lawrence Canal all pulling water out of this the, the opening of the Pawtucket Canal. And so the water power sometime was insufficient to drive all those mills. So James B. Francis, the chief engineer of the Locks and Canals Corporation, decided to build another canal. And it leaves the Merrimack River right at the Pawtucket Falls, the gatehouse, which many of you are familiar with, at the School Street or the O'Donnell Bridge um, is what's shown in this photograph. The red brick building in the background is the Franco-American School. So the gatehouse um, separated water that was above the falls and it directed it into the Northern Canal. Now this is the uh, other side of the gatehouse. So um, the archways underneath the bridge. So you can see how the water of the Northern Canal flowed through the gatehouse and into this canal. It was built parallel to the Merrimack River, right alongside of it. It was separated by an earthen and granite uh, wall that you can see here. So now we're looking to the east from the School Street Bridge, looking along the Northern Canal. You can see people walking along the, the berm that separates the canal from the Merrimack River. Uh, this is further along the Northern Canal. This is under the, um, the Richard Howe Bridge, so where, alongside where the University Ave Bridge used to be. And the people in this photo are walking towards the gatehouse now, with the canal is on the left and the river is far below it on the right. So then once, um, the Northern Canal, right after it crosses under the, the Howe Bridge, the canal turns to the right or to the east, and it flows down along Father Morissette Boulevard towards downtown Lowell. And it comes in right in front of what was formerly the Suffolk Mills, now known as the Wanna Lancet Mills. Uh, and what James B. Francis did was instead of channeling the water um, towards the river, which would be to the right in this photograph, he changed the direction of the Western Canal. So the Northern Canal did two things. It broke one way to go um, to the, towards the river to um, power the Lawrence Mills, uh, but then it also broke uh, to the inland direction and it traveled along the Western Canal um, all the way back to uh, the Pawtucket Canal 
where it uh, sort of supercharged the water flowing through the Pawtucket into the rest of the canal system. Now to further help uh, increase the power going to the Merrimack Mills and the Boot Mills that were, were only powered by the Merrimack Canal, James B. Francis created the Moody Street Feeder. This is another underground canal that few people are aware of. It begins obviously on Moody Street. This is a picture you've seen before. So that's the bridge on Moody Street in the background of this picture. In the far background is the steeple of St. Patrick's Church. So when this picture was taken, the photographer's back was facing the Merrimack River, was looking along the Western Canal towards the acre. So this is the direction the water would flow in after the Northern Canal had been created. Now the red arrow points to those three archways in the Eastern bank of the Western Canal. And here's a close up. Those three chambers are actually the entrance to the Moody Street feeder. And they travel um, to the east underneath Moody Street along its length. Now here's a picture of Moody Street and you can see the tower of City Hall in its background. Uh, and so the, that Moody Street feeder runs underneath this road through the JFK Plaza uh, so where those people are standing in this photo, there's a canal underneath them. It then runs to the side of the Ladin Whitney Monument, and it runs alongside Cobblestone's Restaurant. And then it comes into the Merrimack Canal at this gatehouse, which is across the street from Cobblestone's right along Merrimack Street. So that's a quick tour of the canals of Lowell. Just to, in retrospect, the, um, there, the Pawtucket Canal, which was built as the transportation canal. It connected the Merrimack from above the Pawtucket Falls to the Concord River. Then there was the competing Middlesex Canal, which uh, really doesn't exist anymore. It came off the river about where Hadley Field is up in the Middlesex Village section of Lowell. Uh, it was never part of the Lowell Canal system, but it had an impact on Lowell, so I list it here. The first purposely built power generation canal, which is the Merrimack Canal, which runs along Dutton Street through the Lowell High Campus. Next was the Hamilton Canal, uh, which runs along Jackson Street. It powers the Appleton and the Hamilton Mills. Next was the Lowell Canal, which is the underground canal that comes off the Merrimack Canal. It ran the Lowell Manufacturing Corporation and drains out into the Pawtucket Canal. Uh, the Western Canal came next. Originally, it came off the uh, Pawtucket Merrimack Canal uh, confluence at the Swamp Locks, flowed um, along um, through the acre all the way to the Merrimack River. It powered the Suffolk Mills, the Tremont Mills, and the Lawrence Mills. Eventually, it was re the direction of the Western Canal was reversed, uh, and so it could help out with the, um, the older canals. At the end of the Western Canal was the Lawrence Canal that was built to help run the Lawrence Manufacturing Corporation. The Eastern Canal is, um, comes from the lower locks right across from the back of the Union Conference Center. It's the one that runs along the side of the Lowell Sun Building under East Merrimack Street and uh, behind Kerouac Park. And it powered the Massachusetts Mills and then the Boot Mills. 1848, the Northern Canal was built. That comes off the river at the Pawtucket Falls, runs parallel to the river till it curves um, after University Ave, and then it follows Father Morissette Boulevard, and that was used to reverse the flow of the Western Canal and then to continue powering the Lawrence Canal. And it also included the Moody Street feeder, which drained water from that, uh, the Northern and then Western Canals back into the Merrimack Canal right next to Cobblestone Restaurant.
So that's a very quick tour of the canals of Lowell, uh, but hopefully that gives you the big picture and the next time you're driving around downtown of the Acre and you're stuck in traffic on a bridge or you're walking around and you see the canal, uh, you might have a better idea of which one it is and what its purpose was. So thanks for watching this episode of uh, Lowell Walks.